live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2017, brought to you by Red Hat. It is day three of the Red Hat Summit here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Rebecca Knight, along with Stu Miniman. We are wrapping up this conference, Stu. Uh, we just had the final keynote of the morning. You, you were, before the cameras were rolling, you were teasing me a little bit that you have more scoop on the AWS deal. I'm, I'm interested to hear uh, what, what you learned. What yeah, Rebecca, first of all, may the fourth be with you. Well, thank you, of course, yes, and also with you. <laughs> Always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, day three of the keynote, uh, they started out with a little bit of fun, they gave out some may the fourth, uh, you know, be with you t-shirts, they had a little Star Wars duel that I was periscoping mm -hmm. uh, th this morning, so love their geeking out. I've got my, uh, you know, Millennium Falcon, Cufflinks on. You're into it. Uh, I saw a bunch of guys wearing T-shirts. Princess and, and the Leia like. was walking Princess around. Princess Leia was you, walking around. There were stormtroopers there. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, Carrie Fisher. Yes. Um, absolutely. But the Amazon stuff. Sure. I, I, you know, I, I think this is the biggest news coming out of the show. I've said this a number of times, and we're still kind of teasing out exactly what it is because partially, you know, really this is, you know still being built out, it's not going to be shipping till later this year, so, you know, things like how pricing works, we're still going to get there, but uh, there's some people that were like, oh wait, uh, you know, OpenShift can be in AWS, that's great, but then I can do AWS services on premises. Well, what that doesn't mean, of course, is that I don't have everything that Amazon does, you know, packaged up into a nice little container, uh, we understand how computer coding works, mm -hmm. and even with open source, and you know how uh, we can make things serverless. And it's not like I can take everything that AWS is and, and shove it in my data center. It's just not feasible. What that means, though, is it is the same applications that I can run. It's running in OpenShift, and really there, there's the, uh, the the hooks and the APIs to make sure that I can leverage services. Uh, th that, that are used in AWS. Uh, of course, from my standpoint, I'm like, okay, so tell me a little bit about how kind of, you know, what latency there's going to be between those services, um, but th th it'll be well understood as we build these, you know, what it's going to be used for certain use cases. Um, you know, we already talked to like uh, Optum, uh, was really excited about how they could do this uh, for their environment. So it's something we expect to be talking about, you know, throughout the rest of the year. Uh, and, you know, by the time we get to AWS reInvent, uh, the week after Thanksgiving, uh, I, I expect we'll have a lot more details. So and it will be rolled out to too, so we'll have a really good sense of how it's working Absolutely. in the marketplace. So other thoughts on the keynote. I mean, one of the things that really struck me was talking about open source, the history of open source. It started because of a need to license to existing technologies in a cheaper way. But then really, the point that was made is that open source taught tech how to collaborate, mm. and then tech taught the world how to collaborate because it really was the model for what we're seeing with crowdsourcing solutions to problems facing in education, uh, climate change, uh, developing the developing world. So I think that that is really something that, that Red Hat has done really well in terms of highlighting how open source is attacking many of the world's most pressing problems. Yeah, it, Re Rebecca, I agree. We, we talked uh, we talked with Jim Whitehurst and watched him in the keynotes in, in, in previous days and talked about communities and innovation and how that works. Uh, and at a lot of tech conferences, it's like, okay, what are the business outcomes? And here it's, well, how are we helping the greater good? How are we you know, helping education? It was great to see uh, you know, kids that are coding and, and doing some cool things. And they're like, oh yeah, I've done you know, Java and all these other things. And uh, the Red Hat guys were like, Hey, uh, can, can we go <laughs> hire this like you know seventh grader? Um, uh, had the open source hardware uh, initiative uh, that they were talking about and how they can do that, everything from healthcare to get uh, a, a device that used to be you know ten thousand dollars to be able to uh, you know put together the genome is I can buy it on Amazon for, what was it, like six, seven yeah. hundred dollars yeah. and put it together myself. So, uh, you know, open source and hardware is something we've been keeping an eye on. We've been at the Open Compute uh, project event, which which Facebook launched, but these other initiatives, they had, uh, it was funny, she said like, there's the Internet of Things and they have the thing called the thing that you could tie into other pieces. There was another one that, you know, weave this into fabric and we can censor and do that. Um, we know, uh, healthcare, of course, uh, lots of open source initiatives. Uh, so, you know, lots of places where open source communities and projects are helping proliferate and, and make greater good and make the, the world, uh, you know, a greater place, uh, flattening the world in many uh, cases too. So it was exciting to see. And, and the woman from the, the Open Source Association, she made this, this, this great point, and, and she wasn't trying to be flipped, but she said, one of our questions is, are you emotionally ready to yeah. be part of this community? Yeah. And I thought that that was, 
that was so interesting because it is such a different perspective, particularly from the product side where this is my IP, this is our idea, this is our, this is our lifeblood and this is how we're going to make money. But this idea of no, you need to be willing to share, you need to be willing to be copied. Um, and, and this is about how we build ideas and build the next great things. Yeah, if, if you look at the history of the internet, uh, there was always, right, is this something I just share information or do we build collaboration? You know, back, back to all the, the old bulletin board days, uh, through you know, the homebrew computing clubs, uh, some of the, the, the great progress that we've made you know, in technology uh, and then technology enabling beyond have been because we can, we can work in a group, we can work, we, you know, build on what everyone else has done, that's always how science is done, uh, and open source is just you know, trying to take us to the next level. Right, right, right. And in terms of one of the last, uh, one of the last things that they featured in the keynote was what's going on at the MIT Media Lab, changing the face of agriculture and, and, and how they are coding climate and how they are coding plant nutrition, and really, this, this is just going to have such a big change in how, how we consume as food and how where food is grown, the nutrients we derive from fruit. I was really blown away by the fact that the average apple we eat in the grocery store has been around for 14 months. Ew. You. <laughs> so I mean, just exciting what they're what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely right. If if we can help, you know, <laughs> make sure people get clean water, make sure people have availability of food, shorten those right, cycles, right, exactly. uh, the, the amount information, right. data, the whole uh, farm to table initiative. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, data is involved with that. It's yeah. not necessarily you know just the stuff that you know grown on the roof next door uh, or in the farm you know a block away. Uh, I looked at you know you know local food chain ch chain that's everywhere is like Chipotle. You know they. Right use data to be able to work with local farmers, get what they can, uh, try to help you know, change some of the culture pieces uh, to bring that in. And, and then they, they, they ended up the keynote talking more about the Innovation Award winners. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I have had the chance to interview a bunch mm -hmm. of them. It's a program I really like. Uh, and talking to some of the Red Hatters, there actually was some focus uh, to work with, you know, talk to governments, uh, talk to a lot of internationals, because when they started the program a few years ago, uh, it, it started out very US-centric. Mm. So they said, yeah, it, it, it was actually, it, it's not, it was a little bit coincidence that this year it's <laughs> All international except for Rackspace, mm -hmm. um, but it's you know we should be blind when we think about who has great ideas and good innovation. And you know at this conference, I bumped into a lot of people internationally. Um, talked to a few people coming back from the Red Sox game, and it was like, how was it? And they're like, well, I got a hot dog, and I understood this, but that whole ball and <laughs> thing flying around, and you know I, I don't get it, and uh, uh, things like that. So they're but learning about uh, international code, mm. but also baseball. So this is yeah. This what, is what, what's your take on the global? community that, that, that you've seen at the show this week? Well, I mean, as, as you said, there are representatives from 70 countries yeah. here, so this really does feel like the United Nations of open source. Uh, I, I think what is fascinating is, is that we, we, I mean, we, we're here in the States and so we think about these hotbeds of technological innovation. We're here in Boston, of course there's Silicon Valley. Then there are North Carolina where Red Hat's based, uh, Atlanta, Austin, all in Seattle of course. So all these places where we see so much innovation and technological pro progress taking place here in the States. And so it can be easy to forget that there are also pockets all over Europe, all over South America, um, in, in Africa, doing cool things with technology. And and I think that that's I think that that is also when we get back to one of the sort of the sub themes of this conference. I mean, it's not a sub theme; it is the theme about how we work today, how we share ideas, how we collaborate, um, and how we manage and inspire people to do their best work. I think that that is what I'd like to, to dig into a little today if we can and see where how it is different in, in these various countries. Yeah, and, and this show, uh, what I like is when it, it's 13th year of the show, it started out going to a few locations, now it, it, it's very stable. Uh, next year, they'll be back in San Francisco. The year after, they'll be back here in Boston. They've got the new Boston office opening up uh, within walking distance of where we are uh, here. You know. GE is opening up their big building. Uh, I just heard there's like, you know, lots of startups when I've been walking around uh, the area, every time I come down to the Seaport District, it's like, wow, look at all the tech. It's like log me in right down the road. Uh, there's this hot little storage company called Wasabi that's mm -hmm. like two blocks away. Um, really excited and, uh, but 
one, one last thing back on the international piece. Next week's OpenStack Summit, and mm. I'll be here doing theCUBE, and w some of the feedback I've been getting this week, it's like, look, the, the misperception on OpenStack, one of the reasons why people are like, oh, the project's floundering and it's not doing great is because the two big use case, one is the telecommunication space, which is a small segment of the global population, and two, it's gaining a lot of traction in Europe mm. and in Asia, whereas in North America, public cloud has kind of pushed it aside a little bit. So, you know, unfortunately the global tech press tends to be very much, you know, oh wait, if it's 75% adoption in North America, that's what we expect. If it's 75% overseas, it's not happening. So, <laughs> right. it's kind of interesting. And that myopia is, is, is really a problem because, yeah. because these are the, tr the trends that are shaping our future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so today I'm also going to be talking to the, the women in tech winners. Uh, that's a very exciting. One of the women was talking about how she got her idea or really her idea became more formulated, more crystallized at the Grace Hopper Conference. We, of course, have a great partnership with the Grace Hopper Conference, so I'm excited to talk to her more about that today, too. Yeah, uh, good lineup. We have a few, few more partners. Uh, another customer, Easier AG, who did the, the keynote yesterday. Uh, looking forward to digging in, kind of wrapping up all of this. And uh, Rebecca, it's been fun doing it with you. This I, week. I am with you, and may the fourth, may the, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> and with you. <laughs> Thank you, we'll have more today later from the Red Hat Summit here in Boston. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman.